Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Well, right now it's time for our next hot topic. And we're talking about Professor Wale Shoinka questioning the Nigerian government's failure to prosecute Deborah Samuels Keelers. Joining us this morning to have a conversation about this is James Ebo. Um, good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. He's a Secretary at Administration of Criminal Justice Monitoring Committee, Cross River State. Good morning. Thank you for having me once again. Okay. So I love the fact that, you know, you are in the administration of criminal justice. So I'm sure you're going to shed more light into this. Um, Professor Wale Shoinka, at the 50th anniversary of the Punch newspaper, you know, said a lot of things. And one of the, the conversations he had was about the fact that over two years, Deborah Samuels killers, nobody has been brought to justice. So everybody who was involved in that um, you know, having to, you know, just lynch her because of some alleged blasphemy is still walking free in Nigeria. What do you think about this and the fact that he's coming out, is, you know, attacking, the, not really attacking the government, but questioning them and asking why nobody has been brought to book? Yes, I, I want to use this opportunity for uh, to commend uh, uh, Professor Wole Shoenka for being consistent uh, in reminding state actors about their responsibility. Uh, remember, the business of gov government is basically to protect lives and property, and the life of Deborah Samuel Yakubu was taken without any justification by non-state actors who ought to have been prosecuted. Unfortunately, the state actors who are mandated by law to keep her alive, to protect her, and punish offenders to deter others from doing um, similar things have failed. And I'm happy uh, Oleshenka, you know, um, has reminded them once again. This is not the first time he's uh, reminding state actors, the government, they need to br bring to book those who murdered Deborah uh, uh, Samuel Yakubu. This is not the first time. He has been very consistent almost every year. This is the second year. Uh, reminding the government that, look, justice has to be served. It is unfortunate we have a government that uh, politicizes everything. You know, this is the life of a young woman who, that was taken without any justification uh, for a reason that um, one would say uh, in the 21st century is very absurd. Barbaric uh, is the word you're looking for, barbaric. Yes. Why should we in the 21st century murder somebody for so-called blasphemy? Eh? Assuming that there's justification to even prosecute her, the young men and women should not have taken laws into their hands. Eh? This shows you how the system has failed the people. Eh, we have, um, our systems are very weak. I remember when it happened, there was this show of some arrest being made, people arraigned, and they might, it was just, it was, um, uh, I think, yes, I think it was just done to maybe calm free nerves, not, not calm, the, calm the south mm. or those who were protesting that justice should be served. And thereafter, they actually helped them escape justice. Mm -hmm. So the state government in Kanu, the Nigerian police force is complicit. Mm. Okay, so why do you think that justice hasn't been served? This is two years, 24 months um, or more that we're Somebody talking about. Somebody has been murdered and nobody, nobody has been convicted. Yes. Somebody, they, 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 are, they are not denying the fact that Deborah was murdered. Mm. You, we all watch the videos. Yeah. Horrible. I don't know how they are, the family is coping, mm -hmm. coping with that trauma. Eh? And every person who knew her, had even the Christian community is also coping with that. Mm. What was her crime? So justice has not been served. So why is it taking so long? That's my question. Why is it taking so it's long because, for justice to be because served? A section of this country, because a section of this country believe that their God is superior than our constitution. That is the reason. If you go to the north, this is not the first killing. This will not be the last. 
a lot of Christians or non-Christians or even atheists have been killed extrajudicially or even put in jail by state actors for expressing their rights as guaranteed in the Constitution. And most times they manipulate the provisions of the penal code to suit their purpose. Okay, so where do we go from here? Because we can say this, okay, some people say um, their religion is higher. Um, you have the cases of Sharia law in the north. But for things like this, the, the act in itself is barbaric, and you would expect the government to do something about it. You cannot tell me that a religion is higher than, you know, the rules and regulation that governs a, a nation the laws, the constitution of the Federal Republic should be supreme. And so if there's some form of barbaric, illegal act that happens where someone is being killed, because at the end of the day, in Nigeria, the government should protect the lives and properties of the nation, right, of people, of the citizens. So you're supposed to protect, you know, you know how they say um, the, uh, a person is... Uh, is a property of the state. So now someone has taken that property away from you unlawfully. Shouldn't they be doing something about this? Why is, you know, why are these people still roving around the, 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 the city freely? Why is the government not doing yeah. anything or rising up? Does it have to take someone like Professor Wale Shoinka, reminding them consistently before something is being done? And like you said, this was, he reminded them last year, this is another year with the same form of consistency and nothing is being done. So at, so at what point do we you know, get to see that these people will be brought to books? I think the government lacks the political will. Uh, we... Uh, government will look at the, the mood of the people within that area and they decide whether to take action or not take action. Mm. Government, government themselves do not respect the laws of the land. So they pick and choose what to do, when to act and when not to act, which is a shame. It's a shame because our constitution, the constitution of Nigeria is the ground norm and chapter four clearly one of the basic but fundamental rights of the human person is the right to life. This life has been taken in a manner that is against the law. Hmm. So why is it taking people reminding them of their responsibility? So I want to use this opportunity to call on the president who is the commander in chief to be decisive in protecting lives and property because these are the things that if, they are, if, they, if, if it continues unabated, it can cause um, a, a religious riot. Because the fact that the Christians in, in Sokota are, are the minority does not mean you should destroy them. It means when you have Christians are the majority, they will also want to exterminate the Muslims in their mm -hmm. midst. So there must be a deliberate action to protect minorities in our communities. Both Christians in the north, where Muslims are dominate, dominating, and Muslims in the south, where Christians are dominating, it is in the north and in the south, because they are of the minority. So there must be a deliberate government action to protect minority groups and sects in our communities. Hmm. Okay, so... Um, at this point, uh, that, that also, okay. I want to also use the opportunity to call on uh, to talk about the issue of Mubarak. Mubarak was also arrested, and for two two years, nobody heard about him. He was he was only arraigned two years after his arrest on the issue of also blasphemy. Hmm. So there, there is double standard. The the, the Muslims, uh, our Muslim brothers, should also realize that look. It is important to protect the minority groups in their community. Right. So how do we move forward as a nation, especially with the fact that, you know, things like this happen and the government is not swinging into action? Um, do we need some civil, um, <laughs> civic re um, responsibility societies or, um, you know, people to actually come out to speak about this? But I know that Professor Wale Shoinka is, you know, a highly respected man in this society. So at this point, what do we do? 
I, I think, like I said, um, the Christian communities uh, or minority groups generally should begin to organize and stop uh, uh, organizing, like uh, Innocent Chukuma will always say. Uh, we should start organizing to, uh, during, during a campaign and politicking. How do we assert ourselves? How do we get the politicians, the political elites to protect us in our communities? So we have to start organizing to assert ourselves until we feel safe in our own country. There is genocide, there is xenophobia of minority groups, atheists all of in, the, in the country, Christians in the north, and Muslims in the south. All lives matter. Yeah. And it is government's responsibility to keep us safe. So members of the House of Assembly in Sokoto, it is their responsibility to call out the government. It is the responsibility of National Assembly members to call out. Remember, Deborah Samuel Yakubu is a constituent. Yeah. And every government has every government at every level in Nigeria has the responsibility to keep us safe or bring the killers to justice. So this is another opportunity. And I want to thank Plus TV for escalating it. We have to keep the conversation on until justice is served. Yeah, we do. We, we definitely do. Um, I was going to ask, so about the House of Representatives, do you think there should be some um, laws or bills that should be passed against this? Because you see this happen almost everywhere. For instance, someone is, right now it's even a case of blasphemy, but you go to the market, maybe someone steals a little cube of um, seasoning and the person is being lynched. You see this happen, jungle justice happen all the time. And this is not the first time, like you said, it would not be the last. For years, um, this kind of evil has been perpetrated in our society. How do we get to curb this menace? This is a reflection of uh, the weak institutions we have, our justice system. For instance, let's, let's focus on the police. Yeah. The police is poorly funded, poorly equipped. Their capacity is so low that they cannot detect crime mm. and respond to emergencies. They cannot. Their training is poor. Their take-home pay is very poor. Their equipment... Let me tell you to be very frank. The police have set up two gates. Mm. The police and the Nigerian uh, military have set up two uh, toll gates across the nation. And yet, we, uh, uh, the, the, we have insecurities everywhere. Mm. They've set up to get a starting um, 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 motorist. Yeah. Most police officers, how much are they paid with the inflation we have in this country? Their take-home pay cannot buy a half bag of rice. You mm. saw the videos when customs were giving out 10,000 naira worth of rice, and you see soldiers and police officers scrambling for just half bag of, uh, of rice. Yes. That shows you the situation in this country. All their uniforms, most of them, they, in fact, 90% of police officers buy their kids. Mm. They buy their uniforms. They buy everything they use to work. Where did they get the money? <laughs> we give police vehicles. We don't care how those vehicles are serviced. We don't care how those vehicles are fueled. They go ahead and ask citizens to fuel their vehicles for them. Exactly. Mm. Eh? If you are arrested, if you report a case to the police, you are expected to fund the investigation. That is against mm. the Evidence Act. Citizens are expected to fund criminal investigation and even <laughs> criminal prosecution. That is very unfortunate. And that is a country set up to fail. Mm. I have always said that the police is at the center of every nation's civilization. You get it right with the police, you would have solved 70% of the Nigerian problem. We have to get it right with the police. How are we funding the police? How are we budgeting for the police? Can we ask the police, what is the cost of investigation in 2023? So mm. we can estimate what their 2024 budget will look like. Mm. When their budget is made, what about releases? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I just hope that um, Deborah's killers will be brought to books and um, we're, we're always clamoring for justice um, in Nigeria. We want to... Uh, uh, the, Nigeria. The, the Inspector General of Police, the Inspector General of Police have to respond to the comment Hulesho Inka made. Yes. It is his responsibility. Yeah. He should come out to tell us that Mr. President is not willing to prosecute the killers. <laughs>
Well, um, that's not even what we want. We want a situation whereby um, the, the killers will be prosecuted. We want a justice for Deborah Samuel Yakubo. Anyways, we want to say thank you for joining us and coming to shed light on this conversation. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, we've been speaking with James Ebor. He's the Secretary, um, Administration of Criminal Justice Monitoring Committee across River State. And we've just been talking about the statement um, Wale Shurika made at the 50th anniversary of the Punch newspaper, well, where he was questioning the Nigerian's government, Nigerian government's failure to prosecute Deborah Samuel Yakubo's killers. Anyways, this is the size of our show. This is where we have to wrap it up. Um, it's been a great week having a breakfast with you. Thank you for having breakfast with me. And I'll see you again on Monday. My name is Rume Paulson. Have an amazing weekend.